Chapter 30 The glass door switched shut behind us. I could still hear the cats carrying on in the store. Lou and the two other men formed a tight circle around me. Their faces were grim and angry. Lou had his eyes on the cat carry in my hands. I raised it to him. I... I brought her back, I stammered in a tiny frightened voice. I... I'm so sorry I stole her. I tried to push the carrier into his hands, but to my surprise, he shoved it back at me. That's why we've been chasing after you, he said. That's why we've been trying to catch you. I have to tell you, you can't bring the cat back. Huh? A gasp escaped my throat. I still had the cat carrier held high in front of me. What did you just say? You can't bring her back, Lou said. Get away from here and take that cat with you. You can't bring the dead cat back here, one of the other clerks said. Dead cat? Don't come anywhere near here with her, Lou said. Go away. Now, I'm warning you. But, but, I sputtered. The three men held tense fists at their sides and glared at me. Go, Lou muttered through gritted teeth. My head was spinning. The clerk's words kept swimming through my mind. You can't bring that dead cat back here. Gripping the cat carrier tightly, I turned and ran. My shoes slapped the asphalt parking lot. I ran without seeing, without thinking. I just heard those terrifying words over and over. Did I really have a dead cat in my hands? I saw Bella get run over by that truck. How could she be back? I could still hear the yowls of the cats inside the store. I reached a bus stop and glanced back. The three men were still standing in the parking lot, watching me. They wanted to make sure I left. Why were you so afraid? I had only questions, no answers. When the bus finally came, I climbed on and took my seat in the very back. I set the carrier down gently on my lap. The bus started up. I brought my face close to the screen on the carrier. Bella was sitting up, staring out at me calmly. Are you really dead? I asked her softly. She brought her face up against the screen and tried to lick my hand. Amanda was swaying on the front stoop of the Kaplan's house. Where did you go? She asked. Why did you take the cat? We have to talk, I said. It's too weird. It's all too weird. I set the carrier down. Bella let out a soft cry. Amanda squatted down to see Bella. Is she okay? I... I don't think so, I said. I mean, I don't really know. I took her back to Cat Heaven. You what? Amanda cried. They wouldn't take her back, I said. They've been searching for us all this time to tell us we can't return her. That's crazy, Amanda said. That's not the crazy part, I said. Here's the crazy part. They told me this cat is dead. To my surprise, Amanda burst out laughing. <laughs> I really believed you for a moment, she said. She slapped my shoulder. You got me. You looked as serious as an art joke. I am serious, I told her. It isn't a joke. You're saying there's a dead cat looking out at us from this carry case, the man demanded. Bella too is a dead cat? Some kind of zombie? I shrugged. That's what they told me. And they weren't joking. They were totally serious. Do you have the captain's key? Amanda said. Let's go inside and talk about this. I unlocked the front door, picked up the cat carrier, and followed Amanda inside. Oh no! I uttered a cry. We both stopped in the doorway and cried out in shock. The living room was filled with cats.